Today I'll share four easy methods that you can use to change the background color of an image in Photoshop. So let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and on this channel we love to talk about photography, photo editing, and all that good stuff. So if that sounds like something that you would be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. So today we'll talk about four amazing ways that you can change the background color of an image, whether it has a regular background or a studio background. With the methods that we describe here, we'll be cutting out objects and also using color fill layers to replace those backgrounds really easily and add a solid color for a realistic look. In our first example, will add a white background to a regular image with a normal background to give it that simple product photo kind of look. And then we'll talk about a few other options such as changing the color of a white background to color. We'll talk about gradient backgrounds as well as another method I like to use for changing white backgrounds using a color fill layer and a special blending mode. So with that, let's hop into Photoshop and see how it all works. Now for our first example, we'll be taking this regular image and applying a white background into it. So in this case, we don't have a studio background. There's already stuff going on behind our subject. So we'll have to cut out this object and then replace it with a color fill layer. Now in previous videos, I've talked about a whole bunch of my favorite tools for making selections and cutting out images. However, in this example, since I wanna keep things really fast and simple, I'm gonna be showing you one of my favorite quick and easy selection methods. So the first thing that we'll do is with our image layer selected, make sure it's unlocked and then we'll go up to our properties panel. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go up to window and down here to properties. Within the properties panel, we'll go down and you have two options here called remove background or select subject. These buttons are pretty self-explanatory. Remove background will actually cut out the background and select subject will create a selection around your subject. Now, since remove background doesn't always do the best job out of the gate, I'm gonna use the select subject option so that we can refine it later on. So clicking on select subject, Photoshop will do its work. Now you can see we have an active selection here and things look pretty good considering how quickly it was made. The only problem here is that if you look around the inside of this loop, it didn't actually select that area and then same with a few other spots around the selection. Luckily, we can easily touch that up using the quick selection tool. So accessing the quick selection tool right here in your toolbar, making sure you have the add to selection option checked off, you can now go through and adjust your selection as necessary. Necessary. In this case, as you see in the top of the loop here, the selection isn't quite going near the edge, so I'll just paint on that to add that back in like so. And if you need to change the size of your quick selection brush, just use the bracket keys, that's the easiest way to do it. Now, as for the inside of the loop here, I want to get rid of that. So I'll hold the Alter Option key. Notice how I now have a minus in my cursor here. And now I can start to get rid of that area here and then just going back and forth, holding Alter Option and then sometimes not to add and subtract from that selection to refine this area here. So this looks pretty good to me like so, but obviously there are a few things that could get touched up a bit better. So with our selection made, we can now go up to our select and mask option at the top of our window. Now from here, I just like to leave my view set to the on black, but it's totally up to you which one you'd like to use. But what select and mask does is it allows you to refine your selection further and get rid of any of these problem areas like so, so you get a nice realistic looking cutout. So to get rid of these extra areas, I'm gonna click off the Smart Radius option here, and then I'll select my Refine Edge brush tool here. With that, I'll just go through and paint over the areas I don't want anymore like so, and that's going to refine that selection a little bit and get rid of any of that leftover image from our selection. Even going around more complicated edges like these two little pieces here, it does a pretty good job to get rid of that area with relative ease. Now at this point, we can go to our global refinement options and adjust some of these sliders to further enhance the cutout that we're dealing with. So I like to just increase the smoothness just a little bit. This gets rid of any of those jagged edges around your selection. Then I'll increase the feather just a touch as well because that's going to once again smooth things out. And then to make things look sharp and crisp again, I'll increase that contrast to give my cutout a nice sharp edge. Now in some cases, you might see that there are some colors left over. So you can use the shift edge option, bring that down just a little bit, and that's gonna shift the edge inwards from your selection and help get rid of some of that extra color that's left over or that fringing. And then to top things off, you can go down to the output settings and click on decontaminate colors. And that's gonna do a really nice job to finish everything up and give you a nice 
perfect selection without any fringing left over. So with that, I'll set my output to new layer with layer mask and click OK. Now at this point, we have our selection added onto a new layer with a layer mask. So our other layer just becomes redundant at this point and just for the sake of ease, I'll delete it. With this image layer and the layer mask, you can see that we have a transparent background, which means there's nothing behind it. So at this point, it's time to add some color in. To do that, the easiest way is to add a color fill layer, which can be done by going to layer, new fill layer, and solid color. You can name this to whatever you want, but I'll just call this to white background. Clicking OK. Now you can set the color of your background that you would like. If you wanna change this later on, you can do so very easily, so you don't have to get too hung up on this right now. With all that, we'll click OK, and then we'll drag that white background behind our image layer. And now we have a nice white background behind our subject. Comparing that to the before and after, you can see how good that looks. It looks realistic. And this would look really great on a website if you were trying to perhaps sell this little compass or you just wanted to get rid of the distractions and really focus on the item in her hand. So this is my favorite method for adding a white background behind your subject, and you can do this across a wide array of images using the exact same steps. So let's go and try a different example right here. And this time we have a photo taken in a studio with a solid color background already. Now in this case, I want to change the background from white and add color to it. Using some similar selection methods as before, we'll apply a layer mask onto an adjustment layer so then we can use colorize to change this background. So here's how it all works. First, unlocking that background layer, we'll once again go up to our properties panel and go down to select subject. This is gonna create an active selection rather than cutting out the background completely. With our selection made, there might be a few mistakes. So once again, you can select your quick selection tool and then you can just refine that selection area as needed like so. And then once everything is looking reasonable, we'll go up to select and mask just to help refine some of this hair here. And to make life really easy, there is a refine hair button at the top of the screen. That's gonna help remove some of the fringing around the hair and give it a more realistic look. Although there is still a lot of fringing left over because of the method that we're gonna be using with the adjustment layer, it's not the end of the world. Now from here, I'll just go and do the same thing. I'll just increase the smoothing a little, increase the feather just a touch, and increase the contrast just a little bit as well. You can play around with these sliders depending on exactly what type of thing you need for your specific photo, but I just like to do a little bit of basic adjustments like this. Now with our basic selection made here, we're gonna make sure our output is set to selection, and this is only gonna work if you don't have decontaminate colors checked off. So leaving this unchecked, output to selection, click OK. That's going to bring us back to our active selection, and now we can apply that onto an adjustment layer. So we're going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer, which you can find right here in your adjustments panel, or you can access it at the bottom of your layers panel like so. When you create a new adjustment layer, your active selection will automatically be applied onto the layer mask of that adjustment layer, as you can see right here. Now in this case, if I go and adjust this right now, it's only affecting our model and not the background. So with that layer mask selected, we'll press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask, and now it will only affect the background. Now by itself, adjusting the hue option in the master tab doesn't really change white because white isn't necessarily part of any of your color channels. So what you need to do instead is click on the colorize option and that's gonna apply a single hue across everything in your selected area regardless of what color channel it's in. Now I talk about this a lot more extensively in my other tutorial all about how to change colors in Photoshop. Now from here you can select the hue that you would like, you can increase the saturation of your color, and you can even make it lighter or darker depending on what you're going for. In this case, I just kind of want this light orange color and it looks pretty good to me. The advantage to using Colorize is that you still get the same highlights, midtones, and shadows that were left over from the original background. And rather than having to cut out our entire image like we did in our first example, since it's on a layer mask, we don't have to be as precise and it still looks really good around the hair and things like that. So so turning that on and off, you can see how big of a difference that made, and it was relatively simple considering how much different it makes the background look. So that was our second example for changing the background color in Photoshop. Now going over to our third example, let's create a gradient background behind our subject. Once again, clicking on our background layer, we're gonna unlock it, and this time we're gonna spice things up a little. 
we're going to click on the properties panel and go to remove background rather than select subject. So this will create a selection and then apply it to a layer mask all in one go. Now in this case, it did mess up just a little bit around his head here. It left some things from the background, but that's all good because we can click on our layer mask, select our brush tool, set black to our foreground color, then we can just pick a relatively hard hardness and just mask out that area as necessary. Since it's just a small little area like this, using the brush tool is probably the easiest way to go about this. Now with all that, this isn't quite looking perfect to me, so we'll do a little bit of mask refinements once again by opening Select and Mask. This time, we'll just double click on the layer mask to open the Select and Mask option. From here, I just want to do some of the global refinements to help refine the edge and make it look a little bit more realistic. So once again, I'll increase the smoothing, increase that feather, and then increase the contrast to make everything look sharp again. So that looks really nice to me right there, and then I might even shift the edge in just a few percent and lastly, I'll check off decontaminate colors just to get rid of any other fringing left over and output to new layer with layer mask. Now we'll have a duplicate copy of our image and since our original is becoming redundant at this point, I'll just delete it for now. And now all that's left over, similar to our first example, is we just have to create a colored background. So going up to layer, new fill layer, solid color, click OK. I'll set this to a middle gray color, something like that click OK, and I'll drag that underneath my subject. Now at this point we have our solid colored background, and by the way, you can change a color fill layer at any time by double clicking on the thumbnail, and then you can pick a new color here if you want. But for this example, we want to add a nice gradient to this. Now there is a gradient fill layer, but I find them to be a little bit more complicated and confusing, so this method makes life a little bit easier. We'll first start by creating a new layer above our color fill layer, but below our image layer. Then we'll go and select our gradient tool, and then go to our gradient editor and choose the foreground to transparent gradient like so. So this is going to make a gradient that goes from solid color and transitions to transparency. Clicking OK, I'll then set my foreground color to the color that I want my gradient to look. And in this case, I want it to be sort of a off-white gray color like this. I'll click OK, and now you can see that that's the color that our gradient will be. Now the last thing that you'll want to do is select your gradient type. There are a few different options up here, and the one I want to choose is the radial gradient, which is going to create a circular gradient behind my subject and give it that kind of cool studio look. Now with all our settings in order, we'll click on that new layer. I'll then click on my canvas and drag out to create my gradient. And I can do that multiple times as needed to increase the intensity. Now with that, that looks pretty darn good if you ask me. And turning that on and off, you can see the huge difference that that made. And it was, again, very simple to do. And by using the gradient tool on its own layer, you didn't have to deal with any of the complicated stuff that goes on with gradient fill layers. So that is how you can create gradient backgrounds in Photoshop. And now let's go and discuss my final and fourth example, which is my favorite way for changing white backgrounds to color, and that uses the color fill layer with a special blending mode. So once again, we're gonna start by selecting our subject, and at this point, I'm sure you're getting pretty good at this. I'm going to first unlock that image layer, go to my properties panel, and then go to here to select subject so I can make an active selection around my subject rather than removing the whole background. With that selection active, I'll grab my quick selection tool and adjust it as necessary to help fix whatever mistakes Photoshop might have made. Now with that selection active, I'll then go to select and mask because I want to work on the hair back here. So clicking on the refine edge brush tool, clicking off smart radius. I'll just paint over the hair a few times here just to make it look a little bit more realistic and nice for our selection. Now from here, we can once again go through the smoothing, feather and contrast adjustments, and then I'll shift in the edge just a little to get rid of any fringing. Now, if you would like, you can check off decontaminate colors, but in this example, I want to output this to a selection still, so I'm not gonna check that off so I can output to selection like so. Clicking okay, I'll now have a new selection here, and with this, I'm going to create a new color fill layer. So once again, going to layer, new fill layer, solid color. I'm going to choose a, a nice blue color like this, click okay. And obviously this is the opposite of what we want. So I'll click on that color fill layer mask, press command or control I to invert it. And then since that selection was applied to our color fill layer mask, we don't actually have to place it underneath our image because it already has the cutout of our subject on the color fill layer. 
Now from here, it doesn't really look that nice and realistic because it's just this flat color. There's no shadows or highlights or any exposure values that make it look a little bit more realistic. However, you can change the blending mode from normal to multiply and then it starts to incorporate some of that original background exposure value to make things look a little bit more realistic. So turning that on and off, you can see how it does a really good job to change that white background into a solid color. And if I wanna change its color further, all I'd have to do is double click on that color fill layer, and then I can adjust the color as necessary to anything else that I would like. Now this is one of my favorite methods for replacing the color of a white background, but the only problem with this is it will not work for images with a busy background already. It can only work on an image with a solid colored background or a simple background that doesn't have a bunch of colors going on because when you go to add the multiplied blending mode, if you had say a bunch of cars or people in the background, you would start to see those left over behind your subject. So make sure that if you're using this effect that your subject already has a solid colored background. All right guys, so that was four of my favorite ways to change the background color of an image in Photoshop, whether it is a regular photo with a busy background or something shot in a studio. Even if you have a white background, there still is different ways that you can change that white to different colors very simply using the methods that we talked about here. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Now, I know we talked a whole bunch about creating selections in Photoshop, but if you wanted to learn a few more of my favorite techniques to do this, make sure to check out my previous tutorial sharing four of the best selection tools and cutout methods in Photoshop. You can find that via the link in the description below. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you for now. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com. I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.